All right, it's being recorded. Melissa, you, your hands raised. You have a comment or question? Uh, we just didn't know if you guys could hear us. Um, it didn't seem like you could. So we just, we weren't sure we, it was registering that there were other people here. We've never sure, been there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can explain the format in a minute. I was waiting for, Corinne is, will be the chair for today. Okay. So I'm a staff lead, I'm a planner with the town and a staff liaison. So I don't, I don't, you know, usually let the chair run, but um, it's like there's a number of people here and I don't, I don't know why she's not yet. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll explain it and I can, exp I guess, explain the format while we're waiting for her. Um, so yeah, for everyone in attendance, it looks like there's 18 attendees and the format of these meetings, it's a webinar, a Zoom webinar. So the, the, uh, the commission are uh, pa considered panelists, I'm staff, my name's Nate Malloy. And then there's 18 attendees. So those are members of the public. Uh, I can, we can see you, um, you can, um, you might not be able to, you, you know, you might not be able to see <coughs> anyone else, but we can see you in attendance and we can allow you to speak. So, you know, if you would want to make comments through the meeting, you can raise your hand. Um, but at this point, it would, you know, it's going to start off as a discussion with the commission and representatives from 98 Fearing. And we're waiting for one more member of the commission to join. And then we can, uh, let's see, it's 3.03 on my clock. So we'll wait maybe just one more minute and, uh, and then we can, we, we'll get started if we need to, because there's, you know, members here and we have a quorum. How come I look underwater and you guys don't? What was that, Steve? And why do I look like I'm underwater? And you guys don't. You have a you have a nice little filter on your camera, I guess. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't have a filter anywhere. <laughs> as long as it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me. I thought that was just very clever of you, making it so that we couldn't see the details of your house behind you. <laughs> like what that's people my, used to do what... with with single lens reflex cameras, right? You know, you. Yeah. That's why, I, that's why I have the picture of town hall, so you really don't know where I am. <laughs> All right, well, I think the, um, I, I hadn't, I don't know. Do you want me to call Karen and find out where she is? She was having trouble with her computer earlier. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I was just going to check my email. Uh, I guess I spoke with her just a little bit ago, and I didn't, um, I know she was at one point questionable, but I think, looks like now we have, oh, here she is. Hey, Corinne, are you able to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great. Sorry. Here I am. <laughs> All right, we're waiting for you to start. So I guess we're ready. There's um, yeah. 17 I'm, or so I'm members sorry, of the public was, here. Calling. OK, so I'm opening this public meeting. Uh, of the historical local historical commission it's wednesday february 15th at uh, 306 pursuant to governor baker's march 12th 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law da 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 and pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by chapter 22 of the acts of 2022 and extended again by the state legislature legislature on july 14th 2022 and signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This public meeting of the town's local historic district commission is being conducted via remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. 
but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted in the town's online calendar. Um, so now uh, there'll be a roll call, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can take attendance, yeah. Yeah, Nicole M Miller. Present. Uh, Bruce Colham. Yes, I'm here. Nancy Ratner. Present. Steve Bloom. I'm blurry, but I'm here. Yeah, I wish I were blurry. <laughs> and I'm Karen Winter, and I am also here. Um, so I'm opening the public meeting, and we have an agenda, which you probably know, which is discussion and possible election of officers of as in first place, then discussion of potential project located on 98 Fairing Street, look, uh, discussion of LHD expansion in town center, unanticipated public comment and next meeting date. And um, I talked with Nate and we propose since there are probably so many participants that want to be part of this and maybe have something to say at the end that we change the agenda and start immediately with the presentation. Um, how do you feel about that? Does everybody agree? Agreed. Yes. Agree? Okay. So um, I don't know, Nate, what do I do now? I was going to say a little bit something to welcome them. I don't know who's here. Yeah, sure. So I, um, I've i asked Ted Parker and uh, Charles Roberts, their product representatives, to uh, join as panelists. And um, they can let us know if there's anyone else in the audience uh, working with them. And so they're they're here. And then I guess, Corinne, if you have anything yet, you'd want to say. Yeah, I wanted to say to the people that are, are meeting with us, um, thank you so much for reaching out to us when we feel that this project is in a very, very preliminary stage. We found in the past that if this is the case, the, the result is so much more satisfactory uh, rather than having you spend so much my, money to, to finalize plans that, uh, and then you're locked into something that, that could be very unsatisfactory and not have a chance. Uh, so much nicer to talk informally uh, to begin with, to see if, if we can in fact come up with a, a project which is going to enhance our town, make it more possible for the residential character to be maintained because that's really important. We have an exodus, exodus right now of residents. Uh, we need to preserve that balance. So um, if we talk to each other and get an exact idea of what it is that you want and you're able to really listen to the residents who are impacted by this, uh, and um, and we can move forward together, that would be a good thing. So thank you for coming right now when nothing is really finalized or set in stone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so Ted or Charles, you can you could um, make yourself visible or let me know, you know what to what to share this, you know what to present on the screen. You're muted, Ted. Uh, Charles is intended to take the lead and he uh, is his design and, and he was going to do the presentation, I think. Oh, I just had, I just, sorry. Hi everybody. I just had to press the right buttons. So uh, thank you for that nice uh, introduction, Karen. And yeah, this is exactly the, uh, the opportunity we wanted to have to present things when they're still at, a, at an early stage to uh, get feedback and response and also so you can hear our, our thoughts. Um, so I, I'm representing my, my clients. I think they're probably here um, uh, and they'll, they'll be listening in. Ted's, Ted's working on this project with me as well and uh, from Cole Construction. And Nate, do you see, um, is Jeff Squire in attendance? I don't see Jeff. Right okay, now. so Jeff, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Group is also working with us on site plan and site design. So um, uh, with that, Nate, if you could open up the, uh, the PDF maybe and share the screen. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can share it. Maybe I don't know if you want to start with the. Um, yeah, the, the actually, part. you know, if you, if you could go back to the uh, to the, the context photos and just zoom in on that top left photo, which is the which is 98 Fearing Street. Um, mm -hmm. Just so I talk about that, you know, building a little bit. I'm sure you're all very familiar with it from the, you know, from the the Mass Historic Review documents. But it's a uh, it's a really nice uh, arts and crafts house. It's a pattern book house. Um, built around 1927. It was uh, originally a, a single family house converted into a two family house and now and now a, a three unit house that um, has students living in it. Um, it's, it's, it's a classic um, of, uh, arts and crafts kind of, a, a, of expression of, a, of a, um, architecture, the trim, the window detailing, the you know, rafter tails and so, um, all the components of, of arts and crafts sort of architecture that we we're, we're also fond of. Um, it, it's a it's a little it's a little unique in that it's it's very tall and it has uh, an entrance you know off off center onto the left as opposed to you know a, a, a continuous front porch. But um, these are some of the things that we were we were looking at and responding to in the architecture um, that we're proposing for uh, for the back half of the lot. Um, we have two ideas, um, which I'm going to run by you, and we've and uh, I'll give you a little sense of, of our thought process as we as I run through those those concepts. So, yes, date. Now if we can go to the next advance to the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Let me just reduce the size of this, and then. All right. Let's do. Um... Okay. If anyone wants to have make it more visible, or if that's okay, I'm not sure how it seems. Actually, yeah. Well, well, it's it's tiny on my little screen, but uh, can everybody is it? Can everybody see that? Okay. Okay. So um, this so the the zoning density in this uh, in this neighborhood um, allows actually um, actually could you go back? Yeah. Um, up to up to 10 units on on this piece of property and so you know there's what we're what we're trying to do here is look at what what's 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 allowed by zoning what's sustainable on the site what's feasible what makes sense and how can we kind of right size the design so that we're we're balancing what's allowed by zoning but also being respectful of, of the neighborhood and uh and and especially you know your, your commission and and your stewardship of, of the historic um, uh, you know quality of this neighborhood, and so in this particular scheme, what we're what we're looking at doing is putting three duplexes um, in the uh, the southern half of the lot, which for a total of uh, nine units on the site. So there's three units in the existing building, and then the uh, the three duplexes. There's a uh, we're maintaining the existing driveway down the left side of the site, so that. Um, does not change. We are removing the, the little uh, garage that's set in back of the existing house to accommodate additional parking and the, uh, and the three duplexes. The, uh, the, tar the parking is, is tucked in back of the existing house, um, sort of intentionally screening it from the street as much as possible. And then, uh, and then the, uh, the three duplexes are served just to the south of that parking, creating um, a courtyard space for the pedestrian access um, from the parking for folks who are living there. Um, you, I think, I guess you can move on, Nate. All right, let's do that. Yeah, so the elevations of, uh, of, the, of the building are the architectural expression are reminiscent of, of, of arts and crafts, um, typical detailing and expression. Um, we, there's a clabbered upper siding, um, a board and batten um, lower half for the siding, and then a uh, um, uh, porch with exposed rafter tails and, and tapered columns, um, nice wide trim and trim boards and um, accent, accenting details to, uh, to break up the scale of the house and, and uh, modulate it and sort of bring it into that, that language that we're familiar with. Um, the windows are, are they're responding, so similar to the existing house, the windows respond to what's going on inside. So there's, there's, there's variation within the windows, but what we tried to do was, was create an overall 
balance between the, the, the solid and void of the building and let the windows become um, you know, reflective of what's going on inside. Um, these, these elevations are, are preliminary. And uh, one of the things we'd like to, like to hear from you is, is uh, sort of the additional levels of information you'd wanna see going forward in addition to whatever sorts of changes or modifications you might wanna see to these elevations. Um, okay, next. This is a view from the southwest, looking down into the uh, the courtyard that's being formed by the by the three duplexes. The parking in between the existing house, which is modeled in that white form, and then uh, and then Fearing Street, which is runs along the top edge. So, um, trying to uh, to to uh, uh, maintain as much of the existing vegetated screening between. The, uh, uh, the neighboring properties and, and uh, these buildings. These are pulled back um, uh, a, a fair degree from the neighboring houses immediately to the, uh, to the east and the west. Um, so uh, minimizing the impact on, uh, you know, on, our, on our immediate neighbors. And then um, I know one of the things that the, that the commission is interested in looking at is, uh, is the, the view from uh, uh, Lincoln Avenue, and that's something that we don't, we haven't really looked at here, but we can, we can definitely bring that forward in the, uh, um, in, in the official public hearing. Okay, next. This is, this is a view from the Northeast, looking the, the, the white structures of the existing house, and just give you a sense of, of, of the, of, of the parking between the, the, the new buildings and the existing building and this, the sense of scale of, of these little duplexes and how they're going to sort of not overwhelm the existing site, not overwhelm the neighbors, but be an architecturally compatible, I think, with what's going on in the neighborhood and with this little house, especially. Um, next. It's similar, right? Um, yeah, there, there should be a different one. Um, there should be a ground level view these are these these are interior courtyard views. These these are these give you a better feel for the for the detailing and char architectural character of the buildings with the the, uh, the the tapered arts and crafts columns and exposed rafter tails on the porch and uh, and the trim, um, sort of rounding out the windows and creating sort of of a of a, uh, a belt line between the the upper clapboard siding and the board batten siding below. Okay, next similar eye level views. Again, just giving a sense of the character and quality of the space. Um, so is, there, is, there one, is there one, oh, here's one. So this is, there's, there's a, an existing magnificent tree, which you see just to the left. We tried to model it as closely to scale and size as to where it is, the existing house on the right. And then this gives you a sense of the scale of, of these duplexes tucked in behind. So they, the buildings are, you know, they're modest in size and scale, and they're they're uh, they're nestled in there. So the, the impact on the immediate street is 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 hopefully negligible, but they do harken back to the house that's directly in front of them. So I think there's a nice kind of back and forth happening. Um, one of the things we can try to do is is actually paste this view into a, a photograph from the street, so you'll actually be able to see see the character of the existing house um, side by side with, the, with, the, with the, what we're proposing. Um, okay, next. Um, this, we started off with this scheme and um, this, was, this was the idea of a, uh, of, a, of a four unit apartment building and then a, a six, a, a, a standalone single family um, unit. So, so for a total of five new units, and we were working with uh, a different understanding of, of the density allowances. Um, and, and so we were just, we were trying to um, think, of, think about also just from a property management point of view and, 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 uh, and sort of building typology point of view, how would you, how would you create an, an apartment house that's got four units in it and a little um, standalone single family house that would be compatible with each other and with the existing house. And the architecture is very similar to what I showed you um, in, in the previous scheme. 
in fact, they're 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 virtually identical. It, the 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 difference comes in in, in sort of the scale um, and, and appearance of the buildings in terms of their massing. Um, so you can go to the next slide, Nate. Um, so this was this is a two story, four unit um, apartment building. The uh, the the units are all identical and they stack and mirror. So there's a there's a real regularity with the rhythm of the fenestration and around the building. Um, same same material detailing with board and batten and clapboards and 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 trim. So it's, it's very similar in that respect. Um, pan around the page, yeah. So this gives you in the same similar uh, porch detailing, exposed rafter tails and um, battered columns. And then I think on the next sheet we got the little the little house next door. Um, yeah, and it's it's playing with the idea of of a similar architecture and a similar scale, but um, uh, just sort of interpreted through a smaller house, smaller single family house. And I think we have some exterior views of that, Nate, which you can. Yeah, this one go here. To next. Yeah, so that's that's that same view looking from the parking down a shared sidewalk to the entries of the two buildings. And um, see, I think is that I you can see the similarity. Yeah, yep. And so you can see the similarity in the uh, the architectural expression of these buildings relative to the duplexes, but very different in scale and um, sort of relationship to one another. I think. Okay. Um, yeah, view from the street. So you see the big apartment house. Sort of like the big house, little house. I think this might be. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, thoughts um, are welcome. Uh, recommendations for how to proceed with the public hearing and um, any kind of feedback is welcome. Yeah, so I mean, so yeah, Ted and Charles, thanks. You know, from a staff standpoint, you know, I know it can be tricky, local historic district, you may want to go, um, you know, first, but then we're asking for a lot of detail, right? We need, you know, architectural elevations, we need materials, you know, anything that's a uh, structure on the site. So fencing, light poles, I mean, all that type of information mm -hmm. is needed. Um, I will say that the local historic district regulates views from the public way and it's any public way. So this site is visible from Fearing, Lincoln and Cosby. And I think it would be beneficial to have, you know, elevations and um, anything that shows how these buildings will be viewed from those three streets. So for instance, in this one um, kind of 3D imagery, I mean, I think you need to put in all the surrounding buildings to show context in terms of massing and scale uh, you know, vegetation is exempt from review by a local historic district, and I don't know how accurate that is for screening now. So, <clears throat> I mean, I think like a figure ground plan and then have that translated into a massing model will be really important for views. Um, you know, you said you could insert images into photographs or, you know, um, and, you know, elevations into photographs. I think that's important. I think, you know, elevations from the street or from the different views will be important. And so, you know, I think there's just more information that's needed to understand how this will actually be viewed and be impacted, um, you know, how it will impact the surroundings. So, you know, to me, this is a start, but I think we would need, you know, I would ask for architectural elevations, both like you showed of the building and then also, you know, of the site as how it's viewed from the public way to really understand the relationship of size and scale to, um, you know, to its surroundings. You know the commissioners may have other comments, but I, I think right now there's just, you know, to me there isn't enough information to even um, start making, you know, really fine decisions about this. And I, I can stop sharing if it's easier for everyone to see each other. Am I on or? Yeah. Before we even, I mean, I have a lot of, I have some, I have a ton of problems with this, but before we even get get to them. I want to talk about the garage 
in your application for its demolition, you say that it's derelict. Is that correct? That's correct. I went by there today, uh, except for a door being ajar. I don't. It looks very solid to me. What What about it exactly is derelict? It's <clears throat> it, it's it's on grade. I don't think it has really an adequate foundation. I think for it to to be preserved, it would actually have to have excavation and a foundation built under it. It's it's leaning. Um, it's not used for anything valuable storage because it's they're uncertain as to its structural integrity. Um, so that's why it's called derelict. So in your opinion, it's, I don't understand, I don't know the definition of derelict. I mean, it's been standing for since 1927. So how much longer without the work? I mean, basically it seems to me that you just want to take it down to build these other structures. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I looked around it very, Thoroughly, and I, I just didn't see any evidence except for a door being ajar in front that it was derelict. The other thing that's my biggest peeve, and I've got a ton of them, but I know the other commissioners want to talk, is the parking lot. And I have a call into the Massachusetts Historical Society about whether park, you know, a parking lot of this size uh, in, a in a historic neighborhood that's mainly re that's residential is not in keeping with our with our mission uh, as a commission. And I can read you what our mission is, uh, if you'd like. And I can also- Could I, um, could I just, could I just before that? you get into that, could I just interject that in the bylaw in section nine exclusions, 9.1.2, it says specifically excluded terraces, walks, driveways, sidewalks, and similar structures provided that any such structure is substantially at grade level are excluded. And it also says, that landscaping without, I just finish? without I just shrubbery is not is not exempt, and I would argue that a huge uh, that a huge parking lot would fall under that category of landscaping without shrubbery. And I have a call into the Massachusetts Historical Society asking that very point. There's no specific mention of parking lots in either case as an exclusion or not. So that's a that's the first issue in my book that needs to be addressed. I have a lot of other things, like even like, it does not look like you guys did a lot, took a lot of effort. Even the windows are, are like not multi-pane, like the original structure. Uh, they look like quanted huts to me, and the massing is to me inappropriate, but I don't wanna like tie, you know, I'm just one person, so uh, those are my initial feelings, but uh, I yield the floor to other commissioners. Um, Nate, are we going to have hands? Should I call on people? Yeah, I mean, I guess if, yeah, I mean, so it depends, I guess, how it goes. It looks like Bruce has his hand raised, but sometimes. Uh, yes, yeah. so I will call on Bruce. Um, okay. Uh, the, the first is, um, I guess, Ted or, or Chuck, you've got two proposals in. You've got the uh, the three duplexes uh, on on the uh, as new, and you've got another that's the uh, quad, quadplex plus the single family. Um, is are you are you undecided yet as to which you would prefer uh, proceed with? I mean, are we are we are you asking us to uh, review both, or or are you telling us that you prefer one but you have thought of others? I'm not quite sure what you were. You are yeah. asking us, so I'd like to know which, whether you've got a preferred scheme, and then we can focus on that, uh, or yeah, or what? Yeah, good question, uh, Bruce. Thanks for that. So, you know, our original scheme was the apartment building, the the, the four unit building, and the little single family house, and um, we submitted that, and so you 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 had everybody. I think you all had access to that information. Then we came up with the idea of of the three duplexes, which I think we prefer, um, okay. in terms. Of, and so, and so, I, I I feel, and and my clients can speak up if they're available to 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 second this that that that's the preferred scheme that we would okay. like to that we did that you know I don't think we necessarily have to spend time talking about both schemes. I think that's the scheme that would. That makes it a little easier for us. So that, yeah. that this I hear and this Ted uh, interrupts, so I'm going to proceed on that basis. But the the other the other thing that I think uh, 
And this, um, this is a, a bit, uh, well, first of all, we, we've we done this kind of approach before this, I mean, we being this commission with the uh, sunset uh, fearing uh, development that Barry Roberts put forward. And, um, and we, we, we started with very um, preliminary sketches. We also actually started with a site visit, which we uh, haven't done here yet. So, uh, at least I haven't. I can see that Steve has, and folks that live in the area, and and of course the the that that is the the bulk of our commission uh, appropriately. The people that live in the in the districts, but Nicole and I are are not necessarily because we're not here because we're we're not on the commission for our residential status. We're here for a, a professional affiliation of some sort. Um, so we haven't had a site visit, just so that everybody knows that at least knows it about me. Um, the other thing that's going in my head, uh, Nate, I think I'm talking to you here, but I guess I'm talking to my fellow commissioners as well. Um, this is, uh, I mean, when I look at the, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm reflecting, I'm remembering on how we dealt with the uh, sunset fearing thing. And I know that uh, massing there was important we felt that we had a man uh, an obligation to review the 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 project and how it fitted in from a number of points of view but massing and so forth was part of that and this uh, uh this project certainly is different i i think uh from uh, surrounding although it could be argued i suppose that it's not really it's not one big development it's a development that has got one plus three uh, appropriately scaled uh, structures. So I guess one of the things we're going to have to do is to decide uh, to what extent we accept the zoning uh, uh, density here and and then figure out how uh, whether or not uh, this proposal or any proposal um, that might come before us for this parcel, how does it deal? with the uh with the uh not the entitled density because it has to be i'm sure this requires a permit from probably the zoning board is it uh nate do you know or is this a, a, a site right, plan by the yeah this would be allowed through a special permit with the zoning board so it's you know it's not allowed by right it's a you know discretionary permit all right so it's a discretionary permit, and and I think that what I can see before us here, and probably with a lot of people in attendance, is um, uh, uh, we're going to find as a commission that we're going to be tied into an argument as to whether this zoning uh, density is appropriate, uh, and and I guess we have to decide whether we want to argue with that. Um, or whether we want to accept the zoning density as uh, not as uh, 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 the, the, the designated uh, possibility on the site and then work to uh, make the best uh, uh, development project we can with that development. Um, so that I think we, we my sense is that we should recognize up front uh, which which bus we're on. Um, because it's going to be tough, you know. A lot of people, particularly people that uh, that call in, I suspect, as we as we as we experienced with the uh, fearing sunset, uh, there will be many comments and so forth that are more properly or appropriately will be appropriately addressed by the zoning board. And I don't think that's inappropriate. I think it was good that folks who called in, people in uh, uh, res local residents or whomever were really rehearsing their concerns. They were getting some answers. Uh, they were hearing what other people were saying. So what this commission is providing here, I think is an opportunity, not just for us as the commissioners to work through our obligation, but there's going to be um, the beginnings of the uh, the public conversation here. And, 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 uh, and, and I, I'm, I'm encouraging us to acknowledge that, but also know what our job is and uh, be able to um, keep our eyes on that ball. But it was a little easier for me with the Sunset Fearing Job uh, project uh, because it seemed appropriate 
the question was uh, under what uh, guidance or conditions from us might be. That was my that was my general feeling as we were proceeding with that project. Here I'm, I just don't know. It seems to me to be a. Um, I don't think this site was intended to be developed this way. Um, as a you know as a as a, uh, it doesn't seem consistent with the way the sites are being developed. The buildings themselves may be scaled and so forth, but their aggregation and so forth on the site doesn't doesn't feel as easy to deal with as the uh, fearing sunset project so i'm thinking about how i'm going to deal with that i think i'm going to I, I, personally i think i'm going to look at this um with uh, an acceptance of the possible density here and and then uh and then see what the what the best result can be but i'm not sure whether uh, Nate, do you want to advise us on whether we should contest the uh, the zoning uh, uh, potential of this site, or should we steer clear of that? Yeah, I, I think I think you could assume that the you know the three duplex option you know is allowed by special permit. So you know it's difficult the applicant to do a simultaneous uh, process with the zoning board, or you know I think Bruce, what you were kind of getting at was if you think of those three buildings, you know, how does the commission look at it in terms of massing? What does it really look like in, you know, a section elevation on the site? And is that, you know, so I thought with the Lincoln sunset, I wasn't there, but, you know, I thought that the commission said, well, some of the massing was too big, right? For instance, it was just too bulky, too blocky. And the result was to, to accommodate that was a change in design, which may, maybe then lessen the number of, reduce the number of units, you know, changed roof lines and certain things. And so, to me, that's where the commission would look at this. And so if, for instance, you said, well, the buildings are too massive, let's articulate the roof lines a bit more. And the result was maybe one less unit because that's what would fit with the architecture. That's how the commission goes. I think the, you know, the ZBA might also think that, um, you know, they might say, well, this is too much too, right? There's too much of an impact and they might want to change the design. And then the, the app, the, project would have to come back to the local historic district for review. So, I mean, I would assume, you know, what was shown there, uh, nine total units, three duplexes plus the original house, let's proceed with that. And, you know, if it if it moves forward and then the zoning board also has uh, comments or things, you know, it has to become an iterative process because I don't think we could hedge our bets and say, well, let's, we're only gonna aim for four extra units. I think we can do that, you know, through the, by looking at the massing, the siting, the, you know, the other elements of the design, but, you know, units can be small, you know, they could be small units, right? They could be one bedroom units. And so the unit count is one thing, the size of the building and massing is a, to me. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to make our, I mean, as with Sunset, we made our decision. We, we granted in the end, we granted the certificate of appropriateness and then the whole show moved on to the zoning board. And then it's the, and then the right. issues that were, Apparent, appropriate there were played out um right. uh, here i'm just uh, i'm i'm just wondering uh, what if we decided that the massing on the on the basis of massing it was inappropriate and we were to decide uh, to uh, uh not grant a certificate of appropriateness on the basis of, uh, of 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 some kind of reaction to the 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 massing and so forth of course that they could get us in trouble. We could uh, find ourselves the town in land court. Uh, you know, we have to be careful about uh, being uh, um, going out on a limb like that. But uh, if we wanted to do that, um, uh, I guess we should understand that uh, this, that would be uh, that would be an interesting test of the of the uh, probably. I mean, I don't know enough about uh, whether. Uh, the powers of these kinds of commissions and whether in other towns uh, with local historic district commissions people have said uh, uh, whether com whether any commissions I guess this would be a question do you know whether any commission has uh, basically uh, uh, decided not to grant a certificate of appropriateness even though the zoning in, uh, uh, indicated that uh, that that density was appropriate that was a was possible but that this commission or something like it said, it's not appropriate. It doesn't matter what the zoning says. We just find it's not appropriate and would, and would so decide. 
Is that uh, something that's happened in other towns? Oh, I'm, to I'm assuming. I'm assuming yes. You know, local historic district is a general bylaw, and zoning is land use, and so this is really not a land use. You know, there are different regulations, and so you know, I've often said that a local historic district could approve something that could be denied by the ZBA or not approved by the Conservation Commission if there's wetlands, and so you know, there is that right. There is the okay. the idea that you know, if a product needs multiple permitting, there can be kind of, you know, some, some inconsistencies, but, um, you know, Bruce, I think that the local historic district could say, yeah, for instance, if you thought, if you thought that this application couldn't proceed, then, you know, some of it is, well, what are the findings or reasons why not the applicant could come back right with changes. And so, um, Yes, just as we did with the first uh, uh, um, Amos Media project, where we said no, and we said no because of the following, and we had four. We've made you four know, findings. Uh, Bruce, Sorry, I'll stop I, now, Karen. Yeah. 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 As I understand it, um, our purview is not the use of the residence, but the architectural and the aesthetic aspect, and how does it fit into the neighborhood and the surroundings? Will it diminish the historical flavor? of our beloved Emily Dickinson town and college town. Right now, this is a residential uh, neighborhood that people that have been there for a long time. If we feel that something like this, even if it has zoning, is going to destroy or be harmful to what we're trying to preserve, then I think we are absolutely allowed to say, this is just not going to, to make it in our town. What I really would like to see of this architect and these builders is a way for them to figure out how to design units that are gonna attract young families with children because those are the ones that are exiting and a town, if our town continues to go that way, the whole historical, the whole, the flavor, the character of the town is really damaged. Can you give it a fresh look and look at it and say, my children and my grandchildren, they need to live in town. They can't live in one of these big houses, but they do need a yard. They don't need a huge parking lot. Um, how are you going to, it's probably really easy to have a profitable uh, um, sort of thing and still make it a design that's going to address this, these needs. So I say, yes, the historical commission can say, no, this is not going to do it. That's my feeling. Okay, I'd like to hear from other people like Nancy and Nicole. Nancy? Yeah, so, uh, I am ha having problems seeing this as part of the historic, as being consistent with the historic nature of this neighborhood. I have done a site visit and it the yard is very visible from Lincoln Avenue. Um, and if it's just a parking lot, for a large portion of it, and it looks like it would be a parking lot for a large portion of it, that strikes me as totally inconsistent with the historic nature of the neighborhood. So I'm, I'm especially troubled by the, the parking, by the um, massive amount of building that would go onto what had been a, a backyard. Um, and I, I understand that there is an interest in town to have infill, but, um, Infill of this nature seems um, contrary to what we're trying to establish in uh, an area that has a lot of character to it at the moment. Um, I don't see that character in these designs. So far, you can be making a lot of changes, but I would want to see uh, much smaller buildings. I would want to see um, them much more uh, designed, as Karin says, for a family uh, rather than uh, making as many apartments as possible to stuff in as many students as possible. And that seems to be the plan at the moment. Okay, Nicole, what, what's your feeling? Yeah, so I mean, given that this is the first kind of real application like this that I'm reviewing on the commission, um, and I didn't have that kind of historical perspective of the previous larger complex, I more reflect back to what Nate was saying from the very beginning is that I'm not getting a very good picture at all from what it, how it's changing from the street views. Um, Cause I, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine that the parking lot and that the three duplex buildings um, are obscured from 
the streets. So I think it would need to have a lot more information. I feel very lacking of information to be able to even um, say if if that's like the main perspective of how is this changing the view from the street, I don't feel like I have that information. I think it would be good to start with a site view that we all get together and at the place talk to each other about possibilities. I think that's how on Sunset Fairing uh, we started and it was really helpful just to be able to talk to each other and brainstorm what would be a positive development because we do need development. We all agree that that's important, but how we develop is going to determine whether the town go keeps going down or gets more and more mixed and family friendly. So it's really important to initially stand there and brainstorm, I think. Mm -hmm. Steve? Yeah, just a brief thing. I, in terms of Bruce's point, I just wanted to cite um, chapter 40C, section seven factors to be considered by the commission. And this is a quote, in the case of new construction or addition to existing buildings or structure, structures, the commission shall consider the appropriateness and size and shape of the building or structure in relation to the land area upon which the building or the structure is situated and to the buildings and structure in the vicinity. And the commission may in appropriate cases impose dimensional and setback requirements in addition to those required by applicable ordinance and bylaw. And it says that the purpose of presenting developments in is incongruous to the historic aspects or architectural characteristics of the surroundings and of the historic district. So my reading of that is that we are not strictly bound by zoning. Yes, I have that up on my screen and I was reading it as you were saying it, Steve. And I'm mindful. Yeah, um, I wonder, should we now, since we've gone around, the commission has given their preliminary views. We're, we're just brainstorming right now. Should we open this uh, briefly to the 20, 27 participants that uh, are very eager to speak? And uh, if so, I want to remind those participants that this commission, our purview is not the use of the building. So we can't talk about who it's being built for. But we, it, it is, as I said, the, how does it fit into the neighborhood and how, what is the flavor and the character of the neighborhood and will, will that be enhanced or at least not, um, you know, it shouldn't be a detriment. But uh, we, yeah, to try to keep that in mind. I think, of course, how it's built, um, the whole, that's going to, so that determines who's going to want to live there too, of course. Hmm. Um, yeah, do you do you agree we should open it to, or Bruce, you want to say something? I, I agree. Yes, I think it's good that uh, that we should really hear uh, what, what folks have to say. I just wanted to say that um, what you said earlier about meeting on site and brainstorming and stuff, we have to recognize that that would be, be a public meeting and it would have to be advertised. Uh, typically, when we meet on site, we do not do that. We uh, we discuss uh, the site and make sure we understand uh, the, the the nature of the site and uh, and whether this light uh, whether this light pole works or whether this fence is uh, here or there, things like that. But if we if we were to do what you suggest, Karen, we just have to keep in mind that that would be a very different type of site visit than we typically do. I see. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Right, yeah, I was gonna say a site visit usually is just information gathering. It's not, doesn't even have to be posted because it's really not a public meeting. There shouldn't be any discussion other than clarifying questions in terms of the site. Um, yeah, and so, um, you know, just in terms of information, I think I'll just say that, you know, in the neighborhood, there's a lot of outbuildings. There's, you know, some, you know, accessory dwelling units and other things. And so to me, it's important to say, okay, what, what is the footprint of those buildings? That's why I think a figure ground, something with dimensions of the buildings in the vicinity and the neighborhood, um, you know, all that information is very useful for the local historic district when this moves forward. And so, 
right now, the plans don't show any of that context. And I think that context is very important. So, you know, although Charles, you said the buildings are small, I mean, they look like they're at least 32 by 32, I don't know, maybe, maybe larger. And so, you know, is it that those proportions aren't working? You know, so is it something that the proportionality isn't, you know, makes it so that the buildings appear, you know, bulkier and more massive than, than if they were a rectangle. And so to me, though, that's the information that can really aid the commission. So, you know, what are the footprints and um, dimensions and proportions of buildings on Cosby, on, you know, Beston, on Fearing, on Lincoln in, in the vicinity? And so how does that relate to, you know, especially outbuildings, how does it relate to these? Um, and then the views from the street, like I mentioned, I think those are really important views to see. So, um, Nancy, Nancy, are, yeah, are we also allowed to ask about um, the removal of trees in order to build? Because there's some nice trees there right now that provide some screenage, but uh, if the, if they're gone, then the screening would change what would be visible uh, from all the houses in the neighborhood, the street view, um, et cetera. Yeah, you know, landscaping is typically exempt. So, you know, the local historic district isn't really, um, you know, doesn't mandate tree, you know, maintenance of trees or can prevent removal of trees. So in some instances, we, the commission has said that an evergreen screen can be similar to a fence in terms of screening, but we're, you know, a, a, local, a local historic district is not a tool to, you know, for landscape preservation. So tree removal or site preparation is really not you know, much of the purview of local sort district. And so, yeah, okay. Corinne, if you want to open it, I can, you know, there's two hands yeah. raised. I can allow yeah, members can you, to talk. Yes, could you take over and allow people to talk? And we want to limit the, since there are so many people that are probably wanting to speak, please do not speak for long, no longer than two minutes at the most. Thank you. All right, so Jesse, you can, you're allowed to, Unmute yourself. Great. Hello. Um, hi, Jesse Major. I live at 32 Cosby Avenue. I've been there for about 16 years. Uh, my backyard, uh, catty corner, is this backyard that we're talking about. Just full disclosure. I sent you guys a letter describing some other issues. I just wanted to add two points to this conversation. As I read the bylaws of what you guys do, it says uh, protection of the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places. When I look at these plans, the characteristics of that place is completely opposite of our neighborhood in terms of the number of structures, the number of asphalt, the number of uh, parking spaces. It's really quite different from anything in the neighborhood, as far as I'm aware. I think that's really important, right? Um, the other point I'd like to make, uh, echoing something I think that Karen and Nancy both brought up, this feels like a very one-way decision, meaning no family is ever going to live on this lot again if this is what happens. Uh, and that's a big concern, I think, of mine and other people. So I just wanted to put that out there. Maybe we're not discussing use right now. But again, that changes the characteristic of our neighborhood. The more and more places where families or young professionals will not live drastically changes the characteristic of the neighborhood. And I think that counts in the discussion. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. All right, Melissa. Hi, uh, we're Melissa and Graham. We live on Lincoln Avenue. Our backyard is also catty corner with this lot. It's adjacent. Or adjacent to the lot. And I promise you, there are not enough trees that you won't be able to see this from Lincoln Avenue. The buildings are set back about, it looks like three to five feet from our property line. And they would you know, look directly into our backyard um, and into the backyard of, of all, all the neighbors catty corner to this. The site plans make it seem like there's a large screen of trees on all sides that actually doesn't exist if you come and visit the site. Yeah, it's actually our property, not trees. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, our backyard. it's our backyard, not trees. There's structures back there. Um, but beyond that, the uh, amount of light pollution, the amount of noise pollution, um, I want to echo what Jesse's saying. This development will drastically change the tenor of the neighborhood. And I think that the, the buildings are disproportionate to the lot size. 
Um, they, the, each one of these buildings is larger from the site plans, if they're to be believed, than the existing house. So it's, it's an enormous amount of usage on this lot compared to what the usage is on the other lots in the neighborhood. It does not seem to be in keeping in any way with the general form of the lot use in the historic district. And it, it seems like, as Jesse says, it will be the death knell for families living in this neighborhood. I mean, we certainly it, yeah. would not have purchased this house if we had known yeah. that that was going to be there. Yeah, that's not why we came here. At all. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, uh, I just, uh, young men, can unmute yourself yet? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, my name is Young Min Moon. I am owner and resident at 100 Fearing Street, which is the directly adjoining property from 98 Fearing. So this proposal concerns me greatly. Um, I like to echo expression by Karen in her opening remark uh, when she said exodus of residents. Uh, I've been here, living here uh, for 18 years and about three years ago, I built a small uh, extension, uh, a bedroom and an, an efficiency apartment. So I, now I'm an uh, owner occupied, uh, you know, place here. Uh, now, you know, imagining these new structures being built into, into 98 fearing, I can see how uh, the character of this neighborhood would entirely change or in fact reinforce, further reinforce what has already been happening. You know, my uh, neighborhood on the west, west side is entirely filled by UMass students. And so it's the house uh, across from the street, 109 Fearing Street. Uh, I will be essentially surrounded by student sort of, you know, dorms, if you will. Um, I, you know, I understand that, you know, we are not supposed to talk about who it's, built for, but at the same time, I would argue the use of the building determines the appearance of the building to be designed. Because let's face it, you know, it is revenue generation that is the main reason why this project is being proposed, right? And it is really at the expense of the neighborhoods. I, I would echo uh, the, the previous speakers, my neighbors, Jesse and, uh, uh, Melissa, you know, to have 20 car parking lot, that is entirely a, a true anomaly in the neighborhood. Most parking lots in our neighborhood might accommodate just several cars at most. The only exception I can think of is the house at the corner of you know, Main Street uh, near the uh, Johns Library that has large, you know, uh, condo complex. Uh, I can't think of any freestanding, you know, single individual, single family houses that has large parking units that, that accommodate 20 cars. Uh, in terms of uh, the way it, this project directly impacts me, uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the presentations that, uh, that was given. Uh, the aerial views that were shown are, for, for me, uh, unrealistic because the proposed buildings are shown in a kind of far distance. And when they show eye level views, they are limited to close up views from the parking lot, the proposed parking lot and from Fearing Street, not from my house, for example, where there are not actually many trees like uh, Melissa pointed out. And in fact, those big trees on the Southwest corner of the lot belong to my property. And I've been contemplating cutting down those trees in order to, uh, allow more sunlight exposure to my solar panels. Uh, so I'm trying to go green here. And if I do remove those, those three big trees, uh, already, I mean, the, the existing uh, garage is highly visible from Lincoln Street as been pointed out. But you know, once I remove those three, uh, it'll be entirely exposed. And the way the diagrams of the, the plants show, uh, you know, like Melissa pointed out, there are not trees around those corners. Um, I should also add that, you know, right now, the house with the existing house alone, there are eight cars 
at any given time at night. And, you know, because the, I know that, you know, you're, you're planning to expand the parking lot, but there, you know, there's always one car that sits on the, uh, the abutting grass, okay, the lawn, which has already damaged the lawn. Uh, I just wanted to mention how this, you know, overpopulation of students uh, is actually impacting the appearance of the neighborhood, the historical district. Um, I should stop there for now. Um, thank you. Thanks. Jennifer, you can unmute yourself. Lincoln Avenue, and I, you know, concur in everything that, um, you know, the previous speakers have said. Um, I know that we're asked not to speak to usage, but the impact, it, it's impossible not to respond to the impact that this project, as it seems to be currently proposed, would have on a entire neighborhood. If I'm correct in understanding that right now there's nine structures that would be intended to have four bedrooms each. So a lot that was initially built a single family house, it's been converted into a triplex. I there's probably 12, eight to 12 residents living there now could have up to 36. I mean, that's clearly not what that size lot was in, intended to accommodate. And the ramifications on not just the next door neighbors, but really a whole swath of this small neighborhood would be um, extremely detrimental. So I am right now, if you drove by my house on the corner of Lincoln and Cosby, you would think I was very far from Fearing Street. I'm in my third floor office, which faces onto Cosby. I'm looking at um, Graham and Melissa's house now. So I would see that parking lot, you know, from a couple of blocks away. So this where this huge parking lot, which is nothing like a driveway, all we have in the neighborhood are driveways, a parking lot is in no way contextually appropriate, will be seen by, I don't know, three dozen, a couple of dozen houses between all the houses on Cosby, on a huge swath of Lincoln and on um, Fearing Street. So I would just say that this project is what is being proposed is beyond, I think, the neighbor's worst nightmare. I'm just, you know, I don't mean to be hyperbolic, but there has to be a way we can scale back and make it contextually appropriate, it, appropriate in scale, and not something that really upends a neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ron. Right now, I don't see any hand, any other hands raised. Hey, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so I don't know how we should proceed. Oh. I think oh, sorry, I, I would like to. Uh, am am I mute? Uh, sorry, young young I, young man. I just raised the, his hand okay, again. Okay, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I you know I I, I guess I got a little bit excited, <laughs> but I wanted to conclude by saying that you know. Uh, if this exists, uh, if the proposed project has already been placed, I might, I probably have never bought this, uh, my property at 100 Fearing Street. Uh, so, so again, to kind of, you know, uh, loop my uh, comments, if this project is actually built the way it is proposed, I would be, I might be com compelled to join the exodus. And I would hate to uh, see that happen to my family. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think we really are at a crossroads. The way we decide to develop is going to determine what kind of town we're going to have. If we really let investors maximize profit by putting as much in, which you know is seeming what's happening, that exodus. We, we won't have the Amherst that's uh, the historically worth keeping. Everybody's going to get out, let's face it. So we need to develop. But I would say there is a place in, for example, Lincoln Avenue, a house which onto the back of it put a beautiful apartment 
it's totally in keeping. There's a lot of space. There are so many possibilities for for developing, for becoming a developer and adding to a town and and attracting the kinds of people that are going to make the town vital, that will fill the shops, that will be downtown, not just that UMass should put their students some, uh, anyway, that's my opinion. Okay, so how should we continue, uh, Nate? It looks like Melissa had just raised her hand again. I don't know, Karina, if that's okay. right. Yeah, I did. I just, just to echo what Yin was saying, um, Graham and I have already talked about putting our house up for sale after seeing these plans and hearing about the potential inevitability of something like this going through. Um, and I just want to point out that if people like, if this thing goes through and people like Yin and us put our houses up for sale, the only people who are going to buy these houses are going to be people like the, the LLC from Belchertown that owns the existing property, and they're going to put up a bunch more properties. That's what's going to happen. As soon as the exodus begins, the only people who are going to want to buy the houses are going to be the people who are going to do this exact same thing. So th this is this is a really critical moment for the preservation of this neighborhood. And I, I don't think we're being hyperbolic by saying that. We're aware of the fact that a family is not going to buy this house if there are 36 kids living in the backyard. It's not going to happen. So we're going to end up selling our house to a developer. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to leave. But we're going to get chased out of the neighborhood by these situations if we everyone is. And I, I think the Historic Commission has to understand what something like this is going to do. People are moving to this neighborhood because they want to be in a, in a neighborhood like this, not a place that has 36 people living on a single lot. So... Uh, shall we close the uh, comments or are there other hands, Nate? I don't, there, I don't see any other hands at this time. Yeah, so if, I, if you don't mind, um, I just feel like, especially because um, I'm Nicole Miller, I'm a realtor and, and the realtor was kind of recruited to be on the commission from that professional perspective. And um, I mean, I, I would concur with the decrease in value of family homes, um, especially specifically um, adjacent to the parking lot and to <laughs> multiple um, additional structures. Um, just kind of adding adding that from like, since that's my role on this commission that um, I, I would agree professionally that um, that is not adding value to the to or increasing kind of a, a family home perspective for future sales. Thank you, Nicole. Ted? Yeah, yeah, Ted, yeah. Uh, hi, am I muted? No, I'm, I'm, you can hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> um, I, I'm listening carefully to folks, I, I understand that people's reactions to this proposal. Um, I'm just unclear as to the degree to which this, some of the subjects that were broached in this meeting fall under the purview of the local historic district commission. Um, I think that there are, this, this project will undergo review by other bodies. The zoning board of appeals is gonna to have to review it because it's a special permit. I think the planning board will have to review it too if I'm not mistaken, Nate, am I correct? Uh, the, the planning board uh, won't necessarily, it'll just be the zoning board. Let's be the ZBA. Yep. And some of those questions are, um, I think some of these issues may be more appropriate for, for that forum rather than this one. I think as the local historic district commission considers the, uh, the project, it, it, they should limit themselves to the criteria which are spelled out in the bylaw that they should use to evaluate the project, whether or not it's a single family home or it's a multifamily home, or it may contribute to, if it's a rental property or not a rental property is not, 
is not part of the, the, the are not part of the criteria as I read them. Perhaps I'm mistaken and happy to be disabused of my ignorance, but to use, to try to um, decrease the density of a proposal by using a proxy of some architectural um, um, critique seems to be also a misuse of the power of the local historic district commission whose brief, whose purpose is to protect the characteristic and architecture of the neighborhood um, and to preserve the architecture of the neighborhood. I guess you could make an argument that, that adding new buildings is somehow detrimental to the existing architecture, but I think that's a bit of a stretch. Um, and I think that's the reason why multiple levels of review that it, projects in Amherst, especially projects in downtown Amherst are subject to review by multiple bodies. Um, and I, I'm not trying to, um, dismiss any of the concerns that people have here or who have or that have been expressed here. I just don't know that they fall under the purview of the local historic district commission. I'm not certain that they do. And I would hope that, that the commission reviews their criteria and, excuse me, and applies them very, very, um, very, you know, close to what their actual authority is. That's all, thank you. Um, Steve. Yes, I just want to respectfully disagree with everything that Ted just said. If you look at the, the bylaw in chapter 40, there's three different major purposes stated in Massachusetts general law. And all of those apply to this project. One of them is to maintain and improve the settings, the settings, I emphasize, of those buildings and places. Do you think that this project improves and maintains the, you know, the, the settings? Do they encourage new designs compatible with existing buildings in the district? This is just, you know, even this whole thing about calling the garage derelict after almost a hundred years, is just a blind to like, you know, ma maximize profits off of student rentals. And the, the bylaw that I just quoted makes it very clear that the massing, that all these things that Ted is saying we don't have jurisdiction over, we do. That's why we got historical. And this is a, this is the turning point. This is where we have to dig in our heels and use the tools that we're legally given to preserve the neighborhood because that's what the purpose of a historical district is. Bruce. Um, I too uh, uh, disagree with Ted, um, which is why, uh, on the basis of a lot of what uh, we discussed earlier when I was quizzing Nate about uh, uh, precedence and so forth. Um, I'm going to, I think, I am thinking about this, um, maybe the way the Conservation Commission would think about it, as Nate, suge Nate suggested. This is a, this is a wetland of uh, in, metaphorically speaking this is a, a sensitive area that from the historic pers uh, district perspective it's like a big giant wetland of historic relevance and we have to assess whether this uh, development is uh, is suitable in that context and i think as um, steve has pointed out and and so is everybody who's spoken and i'm surprised there wasn't uh, I mean, I was surprised that there weren't many, many more uh, contributing, partly because I remember the uh, Amos Media thing where we listened for an hour and a half, people were saying, and I made copious notes and uh, a lot of the, uh, the wording of our denial and our findings were verbatim statements uh, from the 50, -odd, well, the 20 or 30 odd people who responded. Um, and I think it's clear that this uh, development is not in character. Um, it's out of scale. 
Uh, and 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 I think I also agree and whether I it should be uh, appropriate for us to take into consideration that uh, this might be the death knell of the neighborhood. Um, I, I I can see that it may well be. I mean, this is such a colossal scale uh, with all this parking, and it's not even parking that's distributed. There's one big parking lot without any um, breaking up into smaller pieces. As has been pointed out, there's no places, there's no recreation here. So it's very clear that the character is changing in terms of the nature of the residential occupancy. Now, I would like to think we could argue that the historic district, the preservation and character of the historic district has to do with preservation of the character of occupancies, that if it changes, I mean, the, the nature of occupancy here is, 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 is very important. And if, uh, uh, and this project at this scale has the, has the power not only to change the, it certainly will change the, 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 the nature of the occupancy, the nature of residential occupancy on this lot, and this has been pointed out by uh, people who, uh, from the public who commented, it will uh, inevitably and possibly rapidly inevitably spread um, uh, out from, from here. So I think that this project really doesn't and can't, at least in its present state, make any reasonable claim to historic char character or legitimacy. Um, I think it's too big. It's too consolidated. Um, there's no, um, um, there's nothing but parking and building, and the parking isn't even distributed, or or or, or, or uh, attenuated or broken up. So, I don't know. I mean, we can think about what the findings might be, and this is not a hearing. So we, we, we our purpose is to give some feedback to the developer and to uh, his design consultants. But I agree with. I think everybody else uh, I've heard on this commission and everybody who's called in that this is not appropriate. This is not appropriate. And if, uh, and I can work on as well as with the others and so with sister reasons why, but it's not appropriate. Charles, view. would you like to say something? Sure. Um, well, I, I, I respect everything I've, I've heard here and, and, and say I, I do agree with some of the things that I've heard. And I, I would like to, you know, I, 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 I represent my clients and my clients interests and, and um, what I think what I need to do, and I don't know if they're still here or not, I have participants in staff, but I'm gonna go back to them. And I, I know they've heard some of this and, uh, and, and try to, Think about how we can um, take the concerns that we've heard and 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 develop a project that is answers them and is more appropriate in terms of the numbers of bedrooms, parking, where the parking is laid out, screening, um, accurate inventory. We do we do have a site survey that has an accurate inventory of all the trees. So that'll be a big help. And um, and see if we can if we can um, re, re retool design or, 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 or redesign a project really from whole cloth. I think at this point, um, and and in in a way that still is beneficial for the for, the, for my clients, but is also ultimately beneficial for the neighborhood. And the need there is a need for housing. There's a lot of student housing in this immediate neighborhood on the street. So it's not, student housing isn't coming out of nowhere here, um, but I do understand the concerns about density on this particular lot. Um, there's a big difference between this lot and the Fearing Street lot because Fearing Street had an edge to deal with. It was, it was a, it's along a street, um, defines a, it holds a corner. It's urbanistically, it's an extremely different lot than this. So. And this gets back to sort of the uniqueness of this property and how it's, you know, we're, we're building something on the back lot. Like this. 
it's, it doesn't it doesn't have the street character is in the same way that, that the uh that the Aaron Roberts question does. So I just think I don't I don't know if the answer is there necessarily, but I think that's an interesting point. And I think that, that no matter what we do, coming back to the design, it's thinking about how how our backlots developed. You know, what's is is there an opportunity to take the garage and turn it into an ADU or, or, or like a little one bedroom studio and then um, as a starting place maybe. So I think those are some of the thoughts that I'll that I will bring to bear. Thank you. Thank you for that response. We really appreciate that. And I think it's it shows that coming together early is really important. Uh, I was going to say, I, I myself haven't, I heard from my husband that that garage is so beautiful. He was thinking of having it moved and exchanged with the garage that we have here on Elp Street. So maybe you could make a really beautiful little house out of it, that. It, yeah, it is, it is a beautiful garage. Ted and I went in there and it's it's scary. Um, I don't, the, the floors aren't trustworthy. The sills are rotting. Um, it's really a shell that that when you go inside is, is is it's not to say it couldn't be done but it would be it would be it would it would be as expensive to as it would be to build a new building and doesn't mean it shouldn't might happen be, just as just as like it, it might be uh historically and in, uh, much more valuable in the long run if our if town develops the way we want to then it, things are going to continue to thrive then things that are really beautiful and historical are going to be worth a lot more than other things. Nancy. Yeah, I just wanted to say I I like the idea of you taking that garage and making it into a studio. And that's something that I would support much more than what you've presented today. It seems much more in keeping with the neighborhood and with the historic nature of the neighborhood. I think it's a charming garage from the outside. Um, are, if there are things you can do to shore it up and turn it into a studio, uh, for a family, that seems far more appropriate. Yeah, that wasn't uh, my original. That wasn't. Go ahead. Oh no, no thanks. That's okay. I I just. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I was going to um, just mention the. I think uh, Charles, I like you mentioned like the backyard development, and so you know there are a few homes on McClellan that have you know two primary structures on a property, but. I think the architecture and the relationship between those homes is different than what was presented. And so, you know, it could be that you have another single family home on the property. And, you know, I don't know if the commission would say that what was presented doesn't resemble that in terms of scale, proportion, architecture, and other things. And so, you know, I like the idea of having a different design that could respond to the context and to the, you know, the property and to the different views from the streets. And so, um, you know, and it might be that. Right, it, it's not what was shown here. It could be, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be reduced units, but it needs to be, you know, architecturally um, appropriate and meet the, you know, and have fit in that context and be compatible. And so, you know, you know, that's kind of that's the design challenge, right? I don't know what what it means in terms of units or anything. I'm just saying in terms of the architecture, you know, is there something that that could work as a backyard development? And it would be so nice if developers started aiming at bringing young families into town, if they could lose the focus on maximizing rent with students, but really zero in on the need for, we need children, we need the town to stay vital, we need young families. And that would be really doing something for our town to, to redesign things with that in mind. Um, Nate, do we... Do we wrap it up and continue our meeting with the other agenda points? Yeah, I mean, unless there's any other questions, I guess from uh, Ted or Charles, I don't, you know, I think we could, we could wait to hear from them. I mean, if you'd want to come back at some point, you know, there is no formal application yet. Um, and so this is, you know, and we could have another discussion if you'd like, uh, we could wait to hear from you. I don't know if you have any concluding comments or questions. I think that uh, I, I'm, I won't speak for Charles, but I think we'll just put our heads together with the with the clients and uh, and decide what to do next. That involves completing the process of the yeah, yeah, thanks, Dave. Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm I'm going into a canyon. 
I, I, can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, okay. Yeah, I think to, to echo what, what Ted said, I, I heard he came in finally. I think we got to, we're going to go back to our clients and just re reprogram the, uh, just look, look. consideration. Now you are in here. Yeah. I am in a canyon. I think now we, we get can the hear you. I think I think we get I think we know what you're saying. I think we're good. Yeah. I, yeah, thank you for those comments and thank you for going back and looking at this with fresh eyes with the with the, the real needs and desires of the people around and the town of Amherst in mind. Thank you. Um thank you. So, Nate, should we go to the next agenda thing? Sure, yeah. Ted and Charles, I'll make you um, attendees again. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming. Yes, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate that you reached out. So, yeah, so, I mean, we the first agenda item was um, election of officers. You know, uh, Corinne is the vice chair and acting chair um, you know, because the chair did resign. And so every year the commission should review and just confirm, you know, officers, whether that's just the chair or vice chair. And so, you know, that, that can be a discussion now. You know, I think we discussed it really briefly at the last meeting, but I, I'd like to say that, you know, it'd be nice to have a chair. We could nominate someone or we could just kind of just think about it and say that ne for next meeting that, you know, we would want to have a, either, you know, a, a bigger discussion about it as members consider whether they'd want to be a chair themselves or, you know, have a nominate someone. Um, where's my raised hand thing? Anyway, I, I wonder, is there someone that really would like to be a chair? I mean, I absolutely can't and won't. And I heard, and Bruce can't and won't, I think. I don't know, Steve, would you like to be a chair? You know, I think Nancy would be a great chair. I'm too much of a That's hobby. what I, I was gonna nominate yeah, Nancy. I think mean, Nancy's very measured. Great chair, yes. Like me. I would like to be, when we get to the next item, I, I will speak to that in terms of the downtown LHD, but if Nancy's willing, I think she'd be terrific. I do too. I do too. Nancy, are you willing? And I, I would say, Nancy, to, you could, you could, we could, we could, we could say, let's just consider it. And we don't, you know, if you don't, you know, if you're, you could always, um, you know, we, you and I can talk over the phone or, you know, you, me and Corinne could have phone calls before next meeting if you want to consider it more. So I don't, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but, you know, it seems like two members. <laughs> Think you'll be a good chair, Nancy. So we we can always talk of what that means, like what's the role of the chair and you know time commitments and everything. If that would yeah, be yeah, as, as long as you'll support me through it and tell me what I need to do. I mean, I don't really have any sense of what's involved in being a chair. I have to admit. Sure. Well, I yeah. say that uh, we should. I nominate Nancy to be chair. I second. Should we should we vote or should we postpone it? Nancy, I think. It, my, it, I think um, you, yeah, you can go ahead and vote, and if you might decide to vote me out of the meeting from now. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, how do we do that, Nate? Uh, a roll. So I guess there was a. I guess we could say there was an official a motion, right? Uh, Steve made a motion. Corinne, you seconded, and then we would. Right. Any discussion, and if not, I guess we take a roll call. I support you, Nancy. Okay, Nicole. <laughs> Is it I? I'm sorry. Yeah, Kurt, I guess we, we'd go to a vote. It doesn't seem like there's much of a discussion. Let's go, let's go for a, yeah, let's go for a vote. Okay. Nicole, do you want to start? Do yes. You approve? Approve. Uh, Bruce? I'll vote yes. Steve? Yes. Nancy? Uh, okay. <laughs> and 
I and Karen and I vote yes, and that's the majority, and you are our new chairman. That's great. Do you want to take over immediately? <laughs> no, <laughs> can't wait till next meeting. It'll be great. <laughs> okay. Um, what about vice, uh, vice chair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. So a vice chair, you know, will serve if chair is absent, and I, that is important to have, yes. Uh, Steve, are you interested in being vice chair? Uh, yeah, I would be. I would be interested in being vice chair. Yeah. Okay. okay, I second. I second the motion for Steve. Bruce, I'll I'll make the motion for Steve. I'm not sure that Steve is going to make the motion for himself. <laughs> Although he probably could. Second it. I can still second it. Okay. So shall we um, shall we vote? Nicole. I approve. Bruce. I approve. Nancy. I approve. I approve of myself. Steve and and I also approve. So Steve, you are the vice chair. Now, clerk, I'm not sure. Um, have we had a clerk? Does it, that involve anything like taking notes? Uh, sometimes, I mean, I'm not, I think, um, I, don't, I think, I think the bylaw might call for a clerk and the role might be pretty minimal, uh, at this point, but, you know, in other, other commissions, you know, they might have more of a role, right? Taking minutes or other things. I think that's not the case in Amherst. So it's why just in name only that we have a clerk mostly. Why, why don't we right. vote for, why don't we wait for Greta to return? <laughs> Greta? That'll surprise her. Yeah, okay. We we can wait with It will clerk. surprise her if we vote her in, but uh <laughs> she was very worried about being voted in as chair <laughs> in her absence. Yeah, I think that's yeah, as long as you have a chair and vice chair, that that for the most part will you know help and you know the commission can operate with that. Right. Okay, um, so I have uh, uh Karen, I have a commitment that started four minutes ago. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. uh, where do we stand here? Um, are we going to ha continue the discussion of the expansion, Steve? Yeah, I can give I can give it to you really quick, Bruce. The research okay. is done. The research is done. Uh, Susanna Fabing has done form Bs for all 10 properties that are historic. We have to do, I looked it up on the handbook, but we don't have to form a study committee. Um, we can the, the committee can be the study committee. Mm -hmm. So what we're waiting for is um, the first thing I'd like to get is Elizabeth Sharp on the committee. And I, you know, I don't know what, how that's what the interview process is going on because she could be very helpful in writing the significance and doing a lot of the stuff for the preliminary study report and the outreach. Nate, are we making any progress on the interview process? Yeah, the town manager's office is, is setting up uh, interviews for um, uh, vacancies. So I know that they reached out last week and, um, it, you know, um, my guess is the next few weeks there would be people that would be interviewed. Okay, well, I hopefully it will be Elizabeth because she's the co-chair of Historic Northampton and she wrote, literally wrote the book Amherst from A to Z. So I couldn't think of anyone better. The other thing is, you know, I, Nate, I know you get the planning department is so understaffed now. I know there's only two, two of you left, but we were, you and I and Bruce were going to get together uh, to come up with, you know, some ideas to approach the land the property owners about. Yep. So, you know, Bruce and I actually were going to get together on our own, but if um, we could do that, that would be the next step before we start doing outreach. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you can. Yeah. I mean, I, I did. Um speak with one property owner who was in a meeting and we men I mentioned this, but I think um, it was somewhat in incidentally. So I think, yeah, I can, I would say that you two can get a time to meet and then let me know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, I've been a ping pong ball in the last few few weeks. I've been I really, really busy. I, I, I um, yeah, I apologize for that. I, I honestly, I can't get the work done I wanna get done because I have so many meetings. <laughs> Yeah, Which no, I can't um, imagine. But, you know, I have I have things I have a backlog of work. I I've been working at night an extra time just to get caught up, and so I meetings have been tough. Um, sorry about that. Yeah. No, no worries, no worries. I'm actually going out of town for three weeks. 
next Thursday. So that'll give you a breather. So I guess I'll have to wait. You know, I, I found out my term is for three years and not one year. So that takes a little bit of the pressure right. off. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I looked at the, but, yeah. I sent around the establishing local historic district guidebook from Mass, you know, the updated one from the Massachusetts Historical Commission. So I think, you know, some of it was right. I think the strategy could be what, right? What are the outreach steps of the property owners? And then, you know, how do we get the process officially started? Uh, it's interesting that the research is done. So really, I mean, that's that's usually the um, heavy lift when with- Well, you've seen how much Susanna Paving does. I'm sure each yeah. one is like a little masterpiece. Yeah. Yes, I read what you sent around, Nate. I, um, I, I and, and Steve, I'm also going away for a month starting next Thursday, so it does oh, look like, uh, and I've got a, uh, things we have to do to get ready for that. So I don't think next week is going to work. So I guess it'll be okay. April. Okay. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to Eleuthera. Oh. It's uh, a long Baham Bahamian island. Nice. And, uh, uh, it's uh, I'm going to get rid of my tennis elbow and a few other ailments, I hope. Great. Nice. Yeah. Steve, what about yourself? Where are you headed? Uh, Jenny and I are biking in Chile for three weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. But Jennifer nice. will be doing those Zoom calls in, uh, from Chile. <laughs> while, while riding. <laughs> yeah, the beauty of Zoom, huh? Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, the curse. Aaron, uh, well, thank you so much for sharing today. I know you've had a lot of stuff going on. Really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so, you know, we don't have, just to let you know, we haven't received any um, applications yet. You know, the, the demolition of the garage at 98 Fearing will have to be at some point an application, whether they want to take the garage down or build something new. Uh, you know, and the, the, there's been a number of permits in the district, but for work that doesn't involve exterior changes or, you know, so there's one or two that are replacing windows with very similar windows. And so there hasn't been any activity. I mean, I will say that once, usually when spring comes around and people start planning projects, the commission could get busy. So, you know, I'm anticipating if in, in the next few weeks, we might get, you know, some applications for something that requires a hearing, you know, whether that's, you know, like a, you know, a renovation or a front porch or something, but. I don't have anything immediate, nothing that's really uh, imminent, but. Okay, so let's target April for the three of us to get together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm gonna disappear because I wanna get my, and the people who are waiting. So yeah, I'll see you shortly, bye-bye. Hey, thanks. Bruce, hi. Um, so should we go on? Are there any un anticipated items, Nate? Or have you already covered that? Yeah, just cover that. I don't really have anything, yeah. Okay, and public comment? Yeah, there's still a few that... members of the public here if they want to raise their hand or... Uh, let's see, Melissa? Just wanted to say thank you all so much for uh, letting me speak and for being so considerate with the the proposed thing on Fearing Street. And congrats to Nancy and Steve. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope it's okay if I hang out for just a, you know the rest of this because I think it's so interesting. Oh yeah, well thanks for you can stay. It's public, so thanks. Oh, thank you guys. It looks like Pat. Going to join this group sometime. Yeah, uh, Pat Brinkman, uh, you can. Sure. Hi, I'm Pat Brinkman, and I'm actually on Cosby at 26 Cosby, next to Jesse and Kim, and across from uh, Jennifer and Steve. And I wanted to say thank you too for all of you and thoughtful comments. And I really didn't really think I needed to say anything more that hadn't already been said. Um, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Except that actually there are three very important maples, sugar maples on the border that I'm concerned that the way that the current design is, is gonna wind up killing those trees no matter what happens. So I'm really fearful of that too. Uh, sorry, just clarification that um, right, may be right on the property line or close to the property line. They are probably right on the property line. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Mm 
Uh, yeah, the you know, uh, Charles said they had a survey, so that'll be useful to see to know um, exact location of trees. All right, I don't see any other public hands. I think um, my. Yeah, I think I don't see anything else, Corinne. So I don't know if there's any other business, unless there's any other comments from the commission. No, I got to sign off. I got to go, you guys. Sorry. Yep. Bye. Bye. Uh, next Bye. meeting. Was, <clears throat> yeah, next meeting. I was. I was just wondering. Um, whenever you get an application, how soon do we have to meet after it? Like you were saying, some might be coming in, but I recognize two right. members will be gone for three to four weeks. Like. Yeah. So. Um, we, we can always ask an applicant in writing to extend that period, but uh, typically it's within 45 days. Okay. So, you know, an applicant could be willing to, you know, we could ask for another week or two. Um, you know, the curse of Zoom, I guess, as Bruce said, we could, we could, I could always put it out to you, the commission, just ask, you know, who's available. We, you know, we'd have to have four as a quorum. So as long as four members could attend, um, that's a, that we could have a hearing then. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> So does that, mean that, right. does that mean we're not going to set a date where it can just wait for you to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we could say like in early April and I'll reach out, you know, in March to confirm that. And then if we need to have a hearing at some point, I would also just email the commission. And so, you know, we could just kind of assume early April would be the next meeting. I mean, we could just tentatively put it out there and then confirm later. I don't know if that how that works. I like when you reach out, when you say, okay, we've got this, and how about sure. we meet? Sounds that works for me. Yeah, yeah. Works okay. For me. okay. <laughs> so, can't remember. Do I have to do anything at the end? Just. No, I, you don't. No, I mean, some people say you have to take a vote to adjourn, but I think if everyone's ready, we can, we can just yeah, say. We're, we're ready. Thank you all. And um, thanks for putting up with me. And. <laughs> I I'm so glad I no don't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't say that. laughs> yeah, Nancy, re yeah, reach out to me, um, and then okay. we can we can meet. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. I'm gonna end okay. uh, the webinar then. Thank you very much, Bye, everyone. Bye.